Hi, this is Alpha Uzaini here from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is Decision Tree Approach in Probability. First, let me define what is Decision Tree. A Decision Tree is a diagram. It is a diagrammatic representation of all possible solutions to a decision. It shows different outcomes from a different set of decisions. This diagram is widely used in decision making tool for analysis and planning. Let me also give you the reason for this name decision tree. This diagram actually starts with a box or a root. It starts with the single point and which branches off into several solutions. That's why we call it a decision tree. They are helpful in variety of reasons. Not only they are easy to understand diagrams that support you to see your thoughts but also because they provide a framework for estimating all possible alternatives. For example, if you uh, choose something, let me give you one example. A simple real life example. Do I want a donut? What are the two options you'll get? Either yes or no. If you want to choose one, you deserve it. If you don't want, so it's a good donut. It is not a good donut. A tree diagram will give you all possible solution. So in case if you want yes, then you have two choices, whether you deserve it or not. And if you don't want, you have to check whether it is a good donut or not. So if it is a good one, yes. If it is not a good one, no. And if you are going to choose it, are you sure or not? If yes, get it. If no, just skip it. Is it a good donut? If yes, you can grab it. If it is not a good donut, you can wait for a good one. Uh, hope you understand this tree diagram. You, I have given all the possible options as branches. It starts from a single point and the branches goes on. So it keep on branching for all the possible solutions. So it just looks like a tree, no? Okay. In addition, it helps us to manage the brainstorming process. So we will be able to consider the potential outcomes of a given choice. Okay. Now let me explain you the structure of a, any decision tree. There are actually three important key parts for the decision tree. The first one is a root node from where the tree starts and leaf nodes. The things and the branches or the divisions all the possible solutions. So no matter what type is the decision tree it starts it starts with a specific decision. This decision is depicted with a box root node. Okay. Actually root node root and the leaf nodes holds the questions or some criteria you have to answer. Commonly nodes appear as a squares or circle. It is just like an algorithm. Square depicts decisions while circles represent uncertain outcomes. Branches are the lines that actually connects the nodes that indicate the flow from question to answer. Each node normally carries two or more nodes extending from it. If it is a SR type, you will be getting two branches or if there are more options like outcome of uh, tossing two pairs of coins like that. So if the leaf node results in the solution to the decision, then the li line is left empty. If further no more questions arises, then we can start uh, stop that branch. Okay, let me show you one example. One important thing you should remember here is a decision tree should span as long as is needed to achieve a proper solution. It should not be an incomplete one. It should cover all the questions and answers. Theoretically saying, uh, when you're depicting a decision tree, you should involve every possible decision and outcome in the tree. This will help you with analysis, planning, and it will also allow you to avoid bad surprises. So let me give you, these are the key parts which are very important. There are also so many terms that we will be seeing when you're dealing with a decision tree structure. Apart from the three important key parts, I will also give you the common terms that will be used in t decision tree. These are the things, root node, splitting, decision node, leaf or terminal node, both are same, pruning, branch or subtree, parent and child node, these are the common terms. First, root node. Root node means this represents the entire population or the sample and this further gets divided into two or more homogeneous sets. As I already told you, if it is a yes or no type questions, if this question arises, you'll be getting two branches. If it is a different type of one, you'll be getting more homogeneous sets. 
splitting. Splitting means a process of dividing a node into two or more sub nodes. This is a process. Okay. Decision node means when a sub node splits into further sub nodes, a branch, again one more branch, then it is called a decision node. Leaf or terminal node means nodes that do not split. If no further question arises, we just stop at that point. No, that is called leaf or terminal node. And pruning. Pruning means when we remove sub nodes of decision node, this process is called pruning. You can say it is the opposite process of splitting. Does this make sense to you? Okay, next important technical term that we will be using in decision tree is branch or subtree. A subsection of the entire tree is called branch or subtree. Okay, what is mean by parent and child node? A node which is divided into sub nodes are called parent node of sub nodes, whereas sub nodes are nothing but the child of the parent node. So these are the seven important common terms that will be used in decision tree. So once you get familiar with these words, these terms, you can easily construct a decision tree. There are few applications of the decision tree. Or when the user has an objective, he is trying to achieve maximum profit, optimize cost in operation research, we will be using decision tree. And when there are several courses of action, in that case also we can easily use decision tree. There is a calculable measure of benefit of the va various alternatives. In such cases also we can use decision tree. And one important application is when uncertainty, uncertainty concerning which outcome will actually happen. In that case is also you can use decision tree. And one last application is when there are events beyond the control of the decision maker. For example, environmental factors. So in such cases you can use decision tree. Here is a simple example for you. I'm, I have taken a real life example. So weather. Weather can be sunny, cloudy or rainy. See here I have uh, three branches instead of SO no type this is a uh, uh, more than two two options two branches and sunny can be further divided into for a sunny day the humidity can be high or normal high means yes there is humidity low means no humidity normal time normal it can be either cloudy yes if it is not cloudy it could be either sunny or rainy so there is no second branch for this one and for the third one rainy you should check whether it is also windy or not if there is so much wind you have to check whether it is strong or weak hope you are clear with this example for anything there is some advantages and disadvantages same thing here for the deci decision tree approach in probability we have few ex advantages and disadvantages first let us discuss the advantages it is very easy to understand and interpret am i right the data for the decision tree requires minimal preparation and they force you to find many possible outcomes of a decision. Am I right? And it can be easily used with many other decision tools also when you are uh, using some software. And it helps you to make the best decisions and best guesses on the basis of the information you have. And it will also help you to see the difference between controlled and uncontrolled events. And decision tree helps you to estimate the likely results of one decision against another. Am I right? Okay, now let us see the disadvantages also. Sometimes decision tree can become too complex if it is a different difficult situation. And the outcomes of the decisions may be based mainly on your expectations. This can lead to some unrealistic decision trees also. Am I right? And when you overthink sometimes it happens. And the diagrams can narrow your focus to critical decisions and objectives sometimes. When your creativity, when you are so dull, when you are not interested in that concept, then you may end up with a very simple uh, decision tree, which ha may not have so many branches, which may also not list all the situations, all the decisions, critical de decisions. Okay. So these are the main uh, disadvantages in decision tree approach. So if you want to create decision tree, first write the main decision. Begin the decision tree by drawing a box. You can draw a box here on one edge of your paper and write the main decision on the box. Here we are starting weather and draw lines leading out from the box for each possible solution or action. At least two boxes should be laid out. You should draw. But better uh, not more than four lines. 
and keep the lines as far apart as you can to enlarge the tree later it depends upon the paper that you are using and third important step is to illustrate the outcomes of the solution at the end of each line as I have listed here okay I'll give you a quick tip here it is a good practice here to draw a circle if the outcomes is uncertain and draw a square if the outcomes uh, leads to another problem okay and fourth important step is continue adding boxes and lines here continue until there are no more problems and all lines have either uncertain outcome or a blank ending like this and fifth step is finish the tree the boxes that represent uncertain outcomes remain as they are so a very good practice is to assign a score or a percentage chance of an outcome happening hope you got a better idea on the whole idea okay the decision tree is a kind of probability tree that helps you to make a theoretical or practical decision in case if you get any query regarding this topic kindly let me know see you in the next video have a great time ahead